this book, I think, had close to 400 auditions. Oh, my goodness. Wow. It was a lot. It was a lot. But you had, and you had every, you had everything. It didn't matter that I said, I'm looking for someone that has a soothing voice. I want, you know, people were auditioning that were very, very just over the top with enthusiasm. I mean, I know that I'm talking that way right now. That's just who I am. But that's not my, that's not the voice I wanted. <laughs> Listen, um, you know, speaking to this, I, I have to work hard to slow down to talk to my clients sometimes. Um, but it, I, I have a process where as the auditions come in, I either say yay or nay. And right. then once I've had enough, then I go through all the yays again, and I just I just sort sort them out. It takes me, it, it's a process that usually takes about two weeks for me to to get through. So, right. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I'm glad it worked out. out. Yeah, you did a wonderful job. A whirlwind of thoughts races through your mind, stealing your peace. You'd love to pay attention but you're too busy chasing those thoughts. People with quieter minds could never imagine the noise that echoes inside your head. They'll advise, just turn it off, or focus on something good. I understand how difficult living with a racing mind is, having once suffered from one myself. Despite your best efforts, taming your wild mind seems impossible. You may have stopped trying, don't give up hope. You can take command of your mind again. I offer this book knowing that you can learn to tame your mind, manage stress and anxiety, and get relief, just as I have. Imagine what life could be like once your mind is under control. Melissa Gallant, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Very good. And before we talk about the excellent book, Unmonkey Your Busy Mind by P.R. Gallant, uh, let's clear something up. Now, you and I have been corresponding during the making of the audio book. I've been corresponding with you as Melissa Gallant. Who's P.R. Gallant? <laughs> P.R. Gallant is my wonderful husband. His first name is Pat. Yes. And... Um, we we run our publishing company together so you know we're both involved and we also run a wellness business called um ethereal wellness so we share in everything we do anyway so. right oh well that's great so yeah has certain tax advantages that way too i guess it does <laughs> <laughs> yeah no but that's great that you're both sharing the same passion for wanting to help people with with you know the wellness which is what this is all about on monkey your busy mind whereabouts are you i am in um, florida united states whereabouts and, uh, we're very near cocoa beach we live in a little town that no one has ever heard of which is called port st john but it's just outside of cocoa beach right so not far from cape canaveral you could draw a straight line from my house across the river and you would be at the Space Center. <laughs> so. I, I was there many, many years ago. We're talking about in the 1980s. Uh, I was living in New Zealand at the time and I was coming home to Britain for a holiday. So I wanted to have a stop in the U.S. on the way. And some friends of mine uh, booked a trip to Florida. So I stopped there and we rented a car and we drove around. And Cocoa Beach is one of the we actually stayed in a motel in Cocoa Beach. Yeah, there wasn't any launches on. It was not long after the um, the Challenger accident, so they'd stopped all the flights, which was a shame. Yeah, it's a lovely part yeah. of the world, though. Lovely. Apart from, I remember there was a thunderstorm about three o'clock every day when we were there. Yes, there still is. It's actually um, thundering right now. I, I'm expecting it to start raining. <laughs> right. Well, let's hope the the power stays on while we can talk about the book. Did you grow up there? No, I didn't. I grew up in Arkansas. What made you is, move to Florida? Was it anything to do with a, getting married to a bloke? Um, it had to do with my ex-husband. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, he was from that part of the world and that took you down there? Well, um, what happened was we were living in Arkansas. His parents were here and we came here so that he could work for his parents' company. Right. And then I wisened up and got rid of him. 
<laughs> okay. Right. Okay. So then, well, then did you meet your current husband, Pat? Was yes. it Was it Pat? Did you yes. meet him through the work then, through the wellness uh, uh, thing? Um, no, actually, he and I were both working for a small publishing company, um, which was, uh, there was a magazine publication called uh, Car Collector, mm -hmm. and that was where we met. So we were both working there. <laughs> right, and romanced, romance blossomed across the pages <laughs> of, the, of the car yes. magazine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's really nice. Well, let's let's get to it then. Let's talk about Unmonkey Your Busy Mind by P.R. Galano. Just tell us where the idea came from and what it's all about. Tell me about the book. Um, well, the book is actually written for people who deal with a lot of stress and anxiety. And that's one of the biggest focuses of our wellness company is helping people to manage stress, anxiety, um, overwhelm, that kind of thing. We mostly do this through a combination of CBT, um, MBSR, mindfulness, and meditation. Tell and, us about, um, tell us, you, you used a few initials there. Do you want to clarify for anyone <laughs> who's new to this kind of thing, what they are? Yeah, CBT I, I know, is, I read the book, but I think I just to get, to get, just to get CBT, people. CBT stands for cognitive based, uh, cognitive based therapy. And so it's working with your mind to learn to recognize when your mind is doing things that you don't want it to do, um, such as having an anxiety attack. So it helps you to recognize and stop the anxiety attack when it's happening. And that's what the first part of the book is. The first part of the book is if you're picking this book up or you're listening to it, if you are somebody who's experiencing a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, then the book starts out giving you tools that you can use to kind of get that under control. Then mm. it starts talking more about CBT. And that is examining your mind, finding what's triggering um, a panic attack or what's happening in your mind when you're experiencing a lot of stress and how you can actually use your mind to just manage all of the symptoms that come with that stuff. Mm. Um, so it's having you look at your thoughts, and realizing that your brain actually lies to you a lot. Um, a lot of, a, another thing, and this is where the title Unmonkey Your Busy Mind comes from, a lot of the, these things, stress and anxiety, they cause a lot of overthinking. And so in the, in the um, meditation world, they call that monkey mind. <laughs> Right, <laughs> so that's right. where we came up with the name. <laughs> so, and the, um, and the then, extreme example of it is the is the panic attack, isn't it? But you don't have to get to that right. extreme level for this to be affecting your life. Correct. You don't even have to be somebody who's necessarily feeling a lot of anxiety, but just working under a lot of stress mm -hmm. and helping to slow your thoughts down and see what's happening in your mind um, to find ways to manage it better. So a lot of a lot of people that we work with do have anxiety issues, um, but they also are just really stressed out. Um, it's also effective with uh, work burnout, which I'm a nurse in uh, oh, my yeah. regular job. I'm a nurse. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a lot of that going in nursing and medicine in general right now. But I that's bet. not the only place, you know, it's not the only place where people are feeling burnt, burnout from their jobs. So. Mm -hmm. All of the techniques can be used for pretty much all of those things. Mm -hmm. Even someone who doesn't necessarily think they're under a lot of stress or they don't feel like they're under a lot of anxiety, it can help you with um, those bad days at work when you're just having a really overwhelming day. It can help you to just slow down so that you can take back over control of your mind instead of letting it run haywire and use the techniques once you get that control back over your brain and your brain's not just going 100 miles an hour, then it's easier to focus and be effective at whatever you're trying to do. Yeah, I would agree. And, and at the end of the book, you, you go right into mindfulness medica meditation and there's even a, a guided meditation in there, which I really enjoy doing because uh, many years ago, well, not that many actually, I I got a radio job on a, a breakfast show on a BBC radio station. And up until then, I'd been like a, a music disc jockey. 
So, you know, you get a three and a half, four minute song in between when you speak. But on the BBC, there's no, there was no music on this morning show and there was no commercials either because it's a public broadcaster. So I was on for about three hours every morning, full on, with live interviews with politicians, sometimes local, sometimes Westminster cabinet politicians and that, whatever. And I hate to use the word stressful, but you really had to be on it for the whole time. And I was finding it, you know, the, the, the monkey mind thing just, you know. So I started doing meditation before I went on the air every morning. And it was like having your mind defragged so that yes. all that, you know, that extra <laughs> stuff, it, it, it was still there, but it moved to the, to the back out of the focus and you could just focus on what you had to do that morning five days a right. week. And I can testify that it, it really does work. And obviously I was only scratching the surface of this subject and I found one technique that worked for me, but it was, it was the mindfulness meditation. So it was great to have that as a kind of icing on the cake at the end of the book <laughs> after all of these other things were explained. And I also found that the book opened me up to a lot more ideas about how to cope and whatever would you say that the the this is this book is like a gateway for people who are just discovering that they need to work something out to to de-stress and work more efficiently and effectively right well as you know the book is rather short um the yes. audio version is only about an hour and a half um, Which is so a very efficient way to get the, the information across. You know, for an hour, and a, the, the amount that's packed in there, you know, you don't let up. You know, it's you, there's, there's no filler. It's all killer, to use a radio yeah, expression. Yeah, no, there's no filler. <laughs> yeah. There's no filler in the at all. But it's we designed it that way on purpose. Because if you are a person who is dealing with a lot of anxiety, the last thing you want to do is try to sit down and read a 400-page book. And the last thing you also want to do is get buried under a lot of science that's talking about it. So yeah. this particular book was was written. And one of the reasons that I was really excited about getting it on Audible is because for that person who's very anxious, they can just listen to it. They don't have to try to concentrate on reading a book and they can just go through it. It quickly gives them some things to get them started fast. And then once mm -hmm. they've kind of gotten their minds slowed down to where they can work on something else then we have the mindfulness and then goes into the meditation yeah. so it was it was put together that way intentionally um mm -hmm. because we're writing you know i think the majority of our um audience is going to be somebody who's who's very anxious or feeling a lot of stress and so yeah. those kind of people um typically are not the person who wants to wade through a whole lot of fluff and stuff they want to get to the point you know? yeah so yeah what was it the, what's the old joke the old joke is like uh um i'm a workaholic i'd get some help but the last thing i need right now is another meeting to go to right. so, <laughs> so um it's the same thing, isn't it? If somebody, I make it, I'm making a joke, but if somebody has high anxiety and whatever, then the last thing they need is another project to go through, which is a huge book. Yeah, I get that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and you could listen to it in your car on the way to work. I mean, of course, you're not going to want to try to meditate while you're. No, that's not a great that's idea. No, good unless you're riding a bus. Yeah. Um, but you could listen to the techniques and kind of be ready to have some tools so that when you start to feel that overwhelmed build, you can just take a break and do one of the quick techniques to help you kind of just settle your mind back down and get back into focus before it gets completely blown into a big catastrophe. Yeah. So that, that's the point of all of the quick stop methods that are in the beginning of the book. Now, obviously we want people to buy the book, download the book or download the audio book. Can you just give us a hint right. to a couple of the techniques that, uh, that are in the oh, book? Sure. But I don't sure. want to give too much away because we, <laughs> you know, we don't want people to say, oh, no, I'll watch the YouTube video. I don't need the book anymore. We don't want that. But we just want right. to, I just want for anyone who's, who's approaching this and we've already piqued their interest, just to, when, when you say techniques, what, what kind of thing? Um, um, I've actually bookmarked a couple. I anticipated Great. that you might want to ask some <laughs> questions about it. And I have to put on my glasses because, well, I'm blind, but I pretend like I'm not. Um, one of the really um, effective methods that's in the book is called RAIN. 
most of these are acronyms. So they're pretty easy to remember if you're good at acronyms. I'm really bad with them, so <laughs> but a lot of people are not me and, and they like acronyms. So RAIN stands for recognize what's happening, allow the experience to just be there as it is, investigate with interest and care, and then nourish with self-compassion. So yeah. the first thing you're going to do is it requires a little bit of mindfulness, but you know what's happening. Even if you haven't, if you don't realize you're being mindful, you do realize that things are starting to boil up. Yeah. Um, so the idea is to recognize it before it gets too out of hand. So you're noticing that it's happening um, and allow the experience to just be where it is. That's a big thing because ignoring these kinds of things can get you into trouble um, mm -hmm. going into denial. So you want to just sit with that feeling. So if you're at work and you're feeling very overwhelmed, recognize that you're starting to feel overwhelmed and to take a minute just to sit with that feeling. Right now I'm feeling overwhelmed. This is what it feels like. Describe it to yourself and take a moment just to experience a little bit of that feeling and then investigate with interest and care. That means to think about what is, what is causing you to feel this overwhelmed. What is it that's making it happen? How are you invest? How are you reacting to it? And to ask questions about, is my reaction justifiable? Am I overreacting? Am I blowing it out of proportion? And with care, be gentle with yourself. There's no, there's no point in beating yourself up about it. Yeah. And then give yourself the compassion that you need to yourself to say, okay, you feel this overwhelming. That's perfectly okay. You're going, you're going to be able to get past this and move on with your day. You've recognized it. And now, and now you know what to do about it. Um, a lot of times just taking that minute to just mm. go through these thoughts in your head is very beneficial, but it's structured to help you to start to recognize um, what's happening. And then when you start it, when you, if you practice this particular technique, as soon as you start feeling that recognize, oh, I recognize I'm starting to feel overwhelmed, then your brain with some practice is gonna automatically start going, okay, this is what it feels like. This is, this is what's causing it. I just need to take a second and love myself and have some compassion for what I'm going through and then move on. It, it kind of, if you practice these techniques, they sort of start to come automatically to you. So yeah. that's one of the techniques that works really good for that overwhelmed, stressed out, things are happening too fast kind of feeling. Um, but a really, really fast one for someone who is just maybe starting to feel overly anxious or they feel like they might be having a panic attack is the breathe five, four, three, two, one. So basically what you're doing with this one is you're just going to take a minute and focus kind of on your breathing and look around and think about things. Name five objects that you can observe. So I'd let you just, take a little pause and you're looking around. So I might say, I see my lamp. I see my water bottle. I see a picture. I see a chair and I see a painting on my wall. The next thing you would do is say four things you can feel. And sometimes people don't really know what that means, but you can make it really simple. I feel the weight of my glasses on my face. That's why I don't like to wear them. I feel the, sensation of my body sitting on my couch right now. I feel the weight of my leg on my foot as it rests on the floor. Um, I feel some heat from that really bright lamp over there. So the sensations. And then the next thing is three things that you can hear. I hear a little bit of thunder outside. I hear the hum of my computer right now. And I hear a little chirping outside. There's a, there's a bird. Two is think of two things that you can smell. That's kind of hard right now. I smell the lingering sense, scent of my lunch <laughs> and I smell a little bit of the hairspray I just sprayed. Um, and then one thing that you can taste. Um, you might say I can taste the gum that I'm chewing right now 
Or if you were at the beach, you might say, I can taste the salt in the air, um, you know, something like that. So taking that, taking, it gives you a timeout from whatever is happening that's making you feel the way you're feeling. And it's redirecting your focus to other things in a countdown manner so that when you get to that last one, number one, what can I taste? You have de-escalated the situation without really, you're kind of subconsciously de-escalating the situation. And then yeah. when you're done, you can take a deep breath and go, okay, now I can go deal with this. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just being given that, that gap, isn't it? Because the, the alternative is you end up with this feedback loop of, something's making you anxious and then you're like oh my god i'm getting anxious am i going to have a panic attack and then that's making you anxious and it just it escalates and this de-escalates right. it goes the other way yeah right so, and really and there's actually too. there's actually a phrase in the book that says that gap is where the gold is because that gap is what you need it's yeah <laughs> and that's life isn't it i mean who was it said that you know <laughs> things happen and then you've got like a space of time before you decide how to react to it. But that gap, that that's where you decide that's the most important bit. And that's probably the shortest bit. You know, it probably takes longer for the thing to happen and longer for you to react than the, the, the gap between you deciding how you're going to react. Yet that is the most important thing is, you know, exactly. you can't stop stuff happening. It's going to happen. It's out of your control, but you can absolutely control how you deal with it or react to it. Right. And so, yeah, right. so that gives you that. It extends that gap, which is often yeah. what we need because we... The brain shuts down, doesn't it? Into it literally shuts down into the fight or flight. The adrenaline starts pumping and the blood goes to the muscles of the arms and legs as if we're being attacked when we were Neanderthals by a saber-toothed tiger or whatever. It's, just, it's, giving us, it's giving the blood to the muscles so we can run away and it's draining the blood from the higher reasoning, which is what we need in that moment. And we're right. absolutely unequipped. But that just that one technique and lots of others in the book, they actually let you settle down just enough for that higher reasoning to be switched back on your brain literally right. switches off and is that what the monkey brain part of it means yes yes right. so the monkey brain is when your brain is just going all over the place yeah. so it's it's used to describe a couple of things one is is just you know people who have anxiety um and i've experienced this myself that this is actually how i started to get into meditation. I was actually introduced to it by my husband, uh, Patrick. Um, but when we met, it would take me hours and hours to just fall asleep at night because my brain just would not shut up. It was yeah. talking to me about everything that happened for the last month and everything that might happen for the future month. And I honestly didn't really know that everybody didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that that's just what your brain did because I lived with it for so long. Um, but that was when I started meditating. Meditating was really my answer. I relied on meditation to fall asleep for a really long time. Right. Um, and it was wonderful. And now I don't need it to fall asleep. I still meditate daily. And one of my favorite times is when I go to lay down to go to sleep. But yeah. um, I also meditate at other times and for different reasons besides just being able to get some sleep. Um, but that that just your brain constantly talking to you is yeah. the monkey mind. Yeah. 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 That's self-talk, which isn't always right. positive, is it? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's what part of this book about is also about because your yeah. brain will lie to you. Your brain yeah. will tell you all kinds of things that are not true. And there are actually CBT techniques in here where you are examining your thoughts and determining are, is there any validity to it? And um, my favorite, my favorite thing is put your thoughts on trial. So interrogate them like you're like they're on the witness stand and you're the lawyer and you're trying to find out if they're telling the truth or not. And a lot of times you find out that your brain is really just, it's not telling you the truth. A lot of people think that that voice in their mind is them, it, it, that it's, it's actually them and their own thoughts. But your brain creates those thoughts. And when you think about it, you don't want all of those thoughts. They're unwanted. And mm. so this is helping you to kind of figure out it, it's a difference when you're intentionally trying to think of something versus your brain just running on autopilot. 
Yeah. Um, and a lot of that autopilot really isn't valid, but people, mm -hmm. people don't know it because a lot of times they've never been told that your brain can do that, but it's true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Oh, it really is true. It's a, it's a fascinating book. It's a great book. And like you said, it's a, it's a very efficient book. You don't take long to listen to it as an audio book. So you and your husband, you work together to get the ebook and the print book and what have you out there. And you obviously work very hard on it and put the research in. And it takes longer to write a short book than it does to write a long book because you've got to decide <laughs> what to leave out and you've got to be efficient. You'd gone through all that. How did you find the process then of then turning it into an audio book? Um, well, uh, we, I, we've published a couple of other books this year and, yeah. um, I think audiobook is a great, is a great resource. And I think it's something that people are going to right now. Um, it's, it's the fastest it's growing sector in publishing, book. actually, audiobooks. Right. Right now. Right. Yeah. Because people want to be able to multitask. They want to yeah. be able to listen to their favorite books while they do their house chores or while they drive to work. Um, you know, time is very precious these days. Uh, but this particular book, I think, is very important to have on audiobook because of the fact that it, it's easier if you, if you came to find this book because you're extremely anxious, just focusing to read through it could be very difficult. So yeah. much easier. And um, we've talked to people who deal with that and they agree that the audiobook is the way to go. If mm -hmm. you are that person who's just really, really in a state of overwhelm and anxiety right now, if you're a person who you know that you have a lot of stress and you want to learn how to manage it, maybe you would not have as much issue, but that person who's just living in a state of anxiety all of the time is very difficult to sit down and read. Mm -hmm. So their brain just won't do it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. so you, you've, you've done all this work. You've got this body of work. You've got it into a book. Now you have to hand it completely over to a total stranger on the other side of an ocean. Was that, was that yes. a difficult decision to make? Because I would have thought with a book um, like this, you may have even thought like, you know what, there's somebody we know that does this. I'm, I'm going to get them to look after it rather than to pitch it out there. Because it was an open audition I auditioned for. You could have ended up with anybody yeah. in the world. And, right. and I was very privileged and humbled even <laughs> to be chosen. It was nice. Uh, how did that go down? W were you confident when you said that? Or were you like, I don't know about this guy. <laughs> Anything could happen. What if people can't understand him? Yeah. Well, I will tell you that there is a lot of that. There really is. It's funny being on my end of it versus your end, because um, this book, I think, had close to 400 auditions. Oh, my goodness. Wow. It was a lot. It was a lot. But you had and you had every you had everything. It didn't matter that I said I'm looking for someone that has a soothing voice. I want, you know. People were auditioning that were very, very just over the top with enthusiasm. I mean, I know that I'm talking that way right now. That's just <laughs> who I am. But that's not my that's not the voice I wanted. <laughs> Listen, um, you know, speaking to this, I, I have to work hard to slow down to talk to my clients sometimes. Um, but it, I, I have a process where as the auditions come in, I either say yay or nay. And wow. then once I've had enough, then I go through all the yays again, and I just I just sort sort them out. It takes me, it, it's a process that usually takes about two weeks for me to, to get through. So, right. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I'm glad it worked plan. out. Yeah, you did a wonderful job. You did a wonderful job. And the meditation section was something that was really important to us. And right. um, even though I talk 100 miles an hour and I'm very enthusiastic, one of my biggest roles with ethereal wellness is actually doing meditations. I, I love to do meditations and right. that gives me this, that gives me the benefit of meditating um, as well. But that's, that's what I really enjoy in, in that part of my life is giving, is giving meditation. So it was important to me to have somebody who could um, do that part of the book very well. Because once you've finished reading the book and you're using the tools in it and you're, you know, and you're right on that path and you're getting everything under control, you may just want to go back and listen to just those meditations. 
Yes. Pretty often. Yes. And so I wanted that to be something that people could always have there as a resource. As long as it's sitting in your Audible library, you can just click on that chapter and yeah. do one of the two meditations that are in there. So that yeah. was something that was really important to me. And um, people who didn't do well with the meditations, they didn't make the cut. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Oh, well, it was it was uh, it was a pleasure to do. It was a, a real fun to do. Now you mentioned your 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 company. Did you say it was Etheria? Have I got this right? What, what? How do you say? You it? said it correctly. Yes. Okay. Etheria. I probably said it right. I probably said it right when I did the audio book because it was written on the screen right in front of me. But I just wanted yes. to make sure I got it right this time. What's the website address for that? I'll put that in the description when if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, we have um, EtheriaWellness.com. Ethereum and we also have, right, and we also have ethereapublishing.com that has all of our books on it. Great. Okay, so you can get all of them there. I'll also put a link on to Amazon so you can go straight to getting Unmonkey Your Busy Mind by a That's PR. Wonderful. Thank you. Yo, no, no problem at all. That'll, that'll all be in there. So they'll be in there now. If you go, if you're watching this on YouTube, I mean, if this is embedded somewhere, you may have to find the YouTube version, but I'm sure you can click around something and it'll do that. But right now, if you're watching on YouTube under there, there's all the links you need for those websites and the one direct to, uh, to Amazon to download the book. So what's next for you then? Um, I am actually working on a book that is on happiness. Um, it's, it's um, my I'm I'm really kind of happy with how my cover's going. I'm using the title "Let Your Weird Show." Nice. And and I haven't decided on the subtitle yet, but it's basically finding finding happiness through finding your authentic self and um, things that you could do to increase happiness. I also get into a lot of science. I am a nurse. I do like the science. So this one, I do get into the science of happiness, um, the things that you can do that lead to happiness, how um, the chemistry in your brain and rewiring your brain to be happy. Um, so I get into I get into all of that stuff, plus how to um, just be yourself and get out there and do the things that make you happy and how to find what happiness means to you. So that's what that book is going to be about. I'm working on the second chapter now. <laughs> so. That'll be great when that comes out. That'll be really good. For now, the one to get is Unmonkey Your Busy Mind by PR Gallant. And Melissa, thank you very much. Say hi to Pat for me, although I've never met him, but I'm sure he's a wonderful husband. <laughs> uh, say hi to him for me. And thanks again for choosing me as your narrator for Unmonkey Your Busy Mind by PR Gallant. Yes, thank you so much for having me on today.